you and welcome to Newsline Live. Now then, there is a problem that appears to be in the making and uh, we thought we would uh, highlight that and discuss that particular problem. And that is, of course, the uh, issue about the use of uh, organic, uh, of, uh, or non-organic, sorry, chemical fertilizers. And uh, when we consider that the of the entire, in the entire world, the global figure for uh, agriculture. Uh, when we consider that, we find that 69% of the arable land globally is for grasslands. So, grasslands takes up 69%. The uh, farming of uh, vegetables uh, takes 0.7%. <coughs> now, the global figure for the use of organic fertilizers is at best 3%. With the ban on the importation of chemical fertilizers in Sri Lanka, uh, the hope is that Sri Lanka will be able to go fully organic. But is it a challenge that can be met? Is it a realistic challenge? And very importantly, what will it do to foreign exchange earnings? Well, to discuss the matter, we've got somebody who knows a thing or two about agriculture and farming and so on. And uh, we've got here with us uh, uh, Dr. I'll, I'll, I'll take, actually, before that, we better tell you that he has a degree, uh, he has a PhD in the subject. So he's right here with us. A very good evening to you. Uh, Dr. Nanya Kara. Good evening. Dr. Hema Kumar Nanya Kara, former governor, politician, and um, now you are, uh, you are supporting the efforts of the SJB to bring right. proper governance to the country. Right. Now, I noticed in the, uh, that you have expressed um, serious concerns about the, uh, the announcement by the government to stop uh, the importation of and eventually to stop the use of chemical fertilizers. What is your concern? Now, globally, most of the varieties used for vegetables, fruit, etc., even grains, are new hybrids. After the Green Revolution, which was initiated by Dr. Norman Bullock in 1960s, these hybrids were bred in order to have very high responsiveness to chemical fertilizers, pesticides and other agrochemicals, hormones, and also to micro-irrigation condition. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we try to grow the same varieties, new hybrids, with in organic agriculture, under organic agriculture, we will fail miserably. And uh, crop loss, may amount to even 70% of the normal yield. And this will create a situation where the farmers will become utterly poor and also the food production in the country will go for a six and country will head for a famine. This is my biggest concern. Mm -hmm. The people who, has, who have advised probably our honorable president wouldn't have gone into these details about organic agriculture. As you said, my PhD was on organic agriculture, mm. a sustainable alternative for Sri Lankan agriculture, colon, organic agriculture. Organic agriculture in Sri Lanka is not an impossibility. It's possible, mm. but it has to be phased out over a period of at least 20 years. Mm -hmm first five years will have will one will have to keep the lands for naturalization not just following but naturalization now i remember just after the war that we had in this country i sent a proposal to the president asking him to then president what was honorable mahindra rajapaksa asking him to start organic agriculture in some form in the formerly war-torn areas, because mm. those areas were not under the plough for 32 long years. Mm. Not a grain of fertilizer came in, 
not a uh, milliliter of agrochemicals came into that soil. It was almost like virgin soil, but it never happened. The person in charge who was uh, in charge in giving alienating lands wanted all those lands to go to big companies. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what happened thereafter, but they put high doses of fertilizers, agrochemicals and started growing corn and uh, other crops. What I say is, it is not an impossible task. It is a possible task and we welcome organic agriculture. But it has to be properly phased out. Mm. If I may take an example, purely looking at the point of saving foreign exchange. Yes. If the government says, stop importation of all Western pharmaceuticals yes. and go for Ayurveda, is it possible? It's not possible. Even if Ayurveda is to be developed, we have a lot of faith in Ayurveda, it has to go step by step, phased out properly. Now here, in organic agriculture also, I think the rulers don't understand, we use NPK, N nitrogen comes from urea mostly. Good old days it was from ammonium sulphate, now it's from urea. Urea is synthetically or chemically made, as a byproduct of petroleum. But phosphate is taken from the earth, from the ground. It's mine. And also potassium chloride, that is muriate of potash, the P is phosphate, mm -hmm. K is potash, muriate of potash. It's also taken from O, like I know, sodium, potassium, O, and it is purified. Now, principle of organic agriculture is that whatever the things that comes from the ground or the earth yeah. can be safely used in organic agriculture. So we have to only worry about urea. But even then, if good agricultural practices are adhered to, like what the uh, Department of Agriculture is proposing at the moment, there won't be a problem. We can go into organic agricultural program, massive program, step by step, while having our production levels at the desired levels. Then all organic products also could be followed. And we have to remember in the entire world, only 1.5% of the land area out of the cultivated lands are under organic agriculture. It's only 1.5% 1 1 is under organic agriculture. Mm. And organic agriculture produce go to a niche market. And it is expensive. Mm. Now, in this country, if this government think of shutting off the imports of agrochemicals and org uh, inorganic fertilizers like chemical fertilizers, there will be a big problem in production and productivity. And we'll head for disaster. We'll head for disaster. Definitely, there'll be a famine in this country. It'll be, the impact would be even worse than the COVID uh, pandemic. Well, what do you think has possessed this order to, you know, snuff of your fingers, ban the import of chemical fertilizers, rather than, as you say, uh, it appears logical to go step by step, maybe a small area at a time, maybe a district or a few districts at a time, or maybe perhaps a province even at a time, rather than uh, this very, uh, rather, dare I say, it, dictatorial uh, decision uh, based on God knows what. But the fact is that there is a growing amount of concern about this decision. I think wrong advice. And the top leaders have not really studied or read through these things. It's very amateurist mm -hmm. to just jump into a conclusion like this and say no imports of uh, agrochemicals and uh, chemical fertilizers from next Maha season. Whatever the stocks that we have, we can use, but from next Maha, we won't import. Now onwards, we are not going to import. That's mm -hmm. what they said. Even for next Maha, there won't be any fertilizers. I do not understand how people could make that much of compost or organic matter 
We need in tons, in tons, massive tons so and in, tons. So in whose brain sits all this information? Who's the person or body that is advising the president on this very critical issue? I don't know who the advisors are, but one thing I could say is president should not listen to incompetent, inexperienced advisors. But would he be aware that these people are incompetent and... I, I think he should be sharp enough to find out who the good advisors could be. There are lots and lots of professors, but don't, seniors don't of... Sorry. sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but I just want to get this question in. Do you think that by doing that, we will end up in a never-ending cycle of meetings and committees and so on? Uh, I, I know the uh, former Prime Minister, Mr. Vikram Singh, had a penchant for using committees for everything. So I'm wondering whether that's going to be a problem. No, probably those committees were non-functional committees. Yeah. But a committee of people who are really uh, talented and also educated on these lines could give the advice within a period of maybe one week or so. Now here, the people who have advised, they do not know agriculture, they do not know organic agriculture, and they do not know the effects, ill effects of chemical fertilizers and agrochemical salts. There are some ill effects. That's why Department of Agriculture has brought in a thing called GAP, GAP, Good Agricultural Practices, they go on reducing the usage of chemicals and chemical fertilizers. Simple technique should be is to test the soil fertility. Hmm. Equipment are there. Once you test the soil fertility, you can decide whether nitrogen is necessary or potassium or phosphate is necessary. If it is not necessary, you don't have to add these direct fertilizers. Make, you, you don't have to have all these th three together. Hmm. You can go for separate fertilizers if potassium is in uh, deficient in a soil you can add only potassium once you analyze the soil soil analysis is very simple and then you could uh, could you sort of geotag it and license it or register it as being suitable and for xyz vegetables yeah and so then you know the farmer knows that if you do uh, xyz then you probably get the best uh, optimum use of your land right is that is that is that something possible Th yeah that's that's possible and this is the role of the, the department of agriculture and the agrarian services department to give the farmers the knowledge yeah now from uh, say you take a rice crop paddy short statured new improved hybrids if we try to get these seeds to grow under organic conditions without preparing without having f at least five year period of preparation even so even if you have naturalization over five years we have to have the right varieties to respond to that to grow we have the traditional varieties were the right varieties for organic agriculture mm. or else we can have new selections and new breeding programs for that. Dr. Nayanakara I'm very tempted to um, I'm not interrupting you but I am rather tempted to ask you why it is that you are not with this government. Because if you were, you would have surely been a ideal candidate to be the Minister of Agriculture. Oh, thank you for the rare compliment. Anyway, uh, I am not with this government because I don't trust them. I don't trust them. The top people, I don't trust them with no insult to them. The way that they do things, when we saw first about the uh, talking about meritocracy, yes. we don't see any meritocracy uh, after they came into power. I'm not aiming or pinpointing one person, mm. but the top notches in this government. And I don't trust uh, the do you, top do, people. When you say you don't trust them, uh, are you saying that they are corrupt or is it that their poli political ideology is misguided? What is it? I think they are incompetent. You can't be much clearer than that. Uh, I would like to just stay Leave out like of that. stay out of making hard remarks. Right. They are not competent. Maybe they have interests, but their competence is questionable. 
an incompetent government, questionable decisions. After the break, after we'll have a look at the headlines, we'll be back with uh, Dr. Hemukumar Nani Akara to look at further aspects of uh, the ban surrounding the importation of organic fertilizer or chemical fertilizer. Stay tuned. News first, newsline with Faraz first, newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. And uh, welcome back to Newsline Live. We are in conversation with Dr. Hema Kumar Nanakara. Now then, uh, Mr. Nanakara, many, many, many people uh, are going on about uh, the potential impact on our food security, the production of our agricultural sector. Um, are these real and genuine concerns that you have? About the present situation? Yes. 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 I'm really worried and I think the country will head for a very, very danger, bad disaster to prevent it happening. Uh, prevent it from happening, I want to make my contribution in my own way. And I hope the top people, the rulers in this country, without having an arrogant attitude towards the decisions that they have taken or without having a prestige battle about this, they would revert this decision back to import. But to do that, you need humility. Yes. And you need to be able to accept uh, if you got it wrong. And uh, that's one of the cornerstones of uh, uh, being, um, shall we say, balanced. Because uh, you need to be able to have the ability to poke fun at yourself and to, have, uh, to be man enough to admit it when you get it wrong. And if they've got it wrong, they should just say, well, look, sorry, I got it wrong. And before it gets out of hand, they need to change track. Um, although Mrs. Thatcher was the one who said that, you know, I'm not for U-turns. Um, U-turn if you want to, she told the Russians. But in this case, it, from, from the feedback that we are getting, it appears that this government will have to do a U-turn before it's too late, because the consequences are pretty dire and serious, are they not? I hope and pray they will change this decision. Uh, because uh, it is for the sake of the, it is for the country and for the sake of the farmers. At this rate, if these lands of the farmers, small land holdings of the farmers, become unproductive, and if they cannot produce enough for them to eat, produce enough uh, for them to sustain, then farmers will adam abandon uh, their agricultural uh, profession. They will just abandon their lands and they will have city migration, they'll come migrate to the city. There'll be a severe problem in finding jobs, hospitals, schools, housing, all those problems will follow. And what the government should do is to make farming more profitable and to have a marketing system. Maybe if there are farmers who want to go into uh, organic agriculture, the government can have a authority board to do purchasing of these things like good old days what we had. Now then, um, on the screen you'll see a, uh, it's another aspect of this policy. And uh, currently uh, Sri Lanka has agriculture based exports of approximately 2,199 million United States dollars. That's about 2,200 let's say million US dollars, 2,200 million US dollars. That's the value of our agriculture export. That includes tea, rubber, uh, coconut, uh, and so on. Now then, but they're all agri exports, 2,200. According to uh, the figures available, the import of pesticides and fertilizer amounts to $400 million. These figures, by the way, are not made up here in my newsroom but they rather they are available for your scrutiny from the Department of Agriculture and from the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. So if they got it wrong, then you know, 
it's a different matter. But the fact is that w there is a gap, a net position, if you like, of what, approximately $1,800 million. Dr. Hemakumar Ananyakara, do you think that we, this government, is gambling with the export revenue? That is, is there's a net gain of approximately $1,800 million. Do you think this government is gambling with those figures by embarking on this misadventure of banning chemical fertilizers in one go? I think you used the most appropriate word, is a misadventure. And uh, losing $1,800 uh, million US dollars yeah. is a lot. Now, our trade deficit in the country will get widened. Not only that, tea, rubber, coconut, we export them to other countries. And these things, when we lose our, when we, uh, when the crop production goes down, when the final end product uh, volumes go down, we will lose our markets in the international, uh, uh, international trade centers. Indeed. And how can we recapture that market? We won't be able to take tea as an example. Kenya, Vietnam, their cost of production is low, lower than us. But with a lot of effort and fights, we are holding our markets there. Once we lose it, we have lost it forever. Now then, um, uh, the, uh, we're going back to uh, uh, a few minutes ago when we said that when we, can you identify, uh, do soil tests and so on. Um, a viewer is reminding us that in India you have a soil registration card True. so that the government knows precisely who's, who can grow what and where. And so your entire distribution system, your supply chain into, for the fertilizers, the seeds and pesticides and whatever is all better focused. Uh, we also have a um, uh, comment from a viewer. Uh, the cards coming up on the screen and basically the viewer is saying that you Sri Lanka can't embark on this just like that it needs to be phased in which is what you were saying before uh, the the moving towards organic needs to be phased in you can't possibly do it in one go you can't do you do you agree that that's the message that's uh, coming from a viewer right who sent us in to uh, us earlier? It's, it's uh, you know basically it says that I don't know if you can read it from where you are, but that's what it says. Yeah, it has to be phased out properly. And number one thing is, as I uh, said, and I want to reiterate, we have to have the proper varieties. What it says, uh, Doctor um, Nanayakara, because you can't quite read it off the screen, there is no way Sri Lanka can drive domestic agri and or sport-focused value-added agri by completely banning non-organic fertilizer pesticides overnight. This has to be a phased-in project while production of NP-type organism phosphate fertilizer is increased gradually. That's what it says on the card. I totally agree with uh, that message, what you have got. It's correct. His uh, opinion I respect and it's correct we will have to go on a gradual process and also how now how to find this much of organic matter in this country to overnight switch over to organic agriculture when the crop losses come in when the tea industry fail marginal tea lands in marginal tea lands all the bushes may die without proper nutrition and rubber needs potassium, high potassium and high a bit of phosphorus to produce latex, the panels will get dried up. Cinnamon may not be able, we will not be able to peel because it will be, it'll become woody when the proper nutrition is not given. And coconut, there are some organic coconut lands, okay, it has been going on for some years. Those things are okay if they are ready, but overnight if we stop fertilization, the number of nuts will drop. Now, due to the last uh, few years ago, there was a drought. Due to that, government could manage the coconut prices went up to 150 rupees. Indeed, indeed. And where are we going to be now? Minister of Agriculture 
told, I saw in one of his statements, he's saying, if there's a crop loss for the farmer, they will compensate. Mm. Where is the money? State well, the, the, this is my point. The, the compensation they said was uh, 50 billion rupees. Yeah. Well, it's actually 400 million dollars, yeah. which is a little bit more than 50 billion right. rupees, because that is the value of the imports. Right. So what they're saying is, look, even if there is a crop reduction, we've got 400 million dollars to play with. Well, that's, um, that is a bit wishful thinking. Isn't yeah, it? but that 400 million dollars, when you compare, as you said, with 2,200 million dollars, what is it? And if they, are, if they say that they have lots and lots of money, maybe that they have a magic wand to make, make money, uh, they can pay it to the farmer. But there is no way of paying it to the farmer. As it is at present, government doesn't have funds to pay the salaries of state engineering corporation at the end of the month. And the chairman of the corporation has been taken into hostage. So a government of this nature, if they say we will pay compensation to the farmers for the crop loss, I mean, it's ridiculous. Number two is, uh, Honorable Minister of Agriculture said, if there's a food shortage, we will bring f import food. What, what are those uh, foods? How has it been grown? Is it organically grown? I'm sorry, but uh, our, uh, our dear minister is talking absolute poppycock. But time has flown. We've enjoyed very much having you on the program. Thank, Thank you. you for being so upfront and professional uh, in your analysis of what may happen. Uh, Dr. Hemakumar Nanakara, thank you. Thank you very much. And that's the way it was on Newsline Live. Take care, and uh, it's now time for the primetime news from News First. And God bless you. <laughs>